This conference will now be recorded. Okay. Uh, conditional redeveloper and authorizing execution of a memorandum of understanding between the township and parish construction for block 758, lot 7, 6007 2nd Street. So this is this is the uh, American Legion, Legion building, former fire company uh, building on, on 2nd Street. Uh, we had put an RFP out uh, a few months back. I've uh, got a respondent, uh, local contractor, local gentleman who is interested in refurbishing the building back to its original condition uh, and investing uh, substantial funds back into it. Uh, and we find him to be uh, legitimate and reasonable uh, to get the job done. Okay, so this will now be refurbished, uh, and on top of that, we'll go back on the tax rolls. Correct. Turn this over. Yes. Okay. It's, it's it's nice to see it's something we've been working on for a long time, and it's brought about by um, you know uh, the township concentrating on redevelopment. And I, I think that's something that needs to be pointed out, and um, uh, you know hopefully this will be uh, uh, a historic building that will return to its former glory and be an asset. To the township instead of uh, the eyesore that it's been so yeah. i want to compliment the members of the planning board and this governing body for uh taking those actions and allowing stuff like this to happen the garage yes mm -hmm. um, i'm sure uh brett and public works will be glad to this was a full-time job for you guys huh so and i appreciate what you did uh, without your hard work, it probably wouldn't still be standing. Uh, we we did this uh, RFP a couple of years ago, um, same intention, but I think what's happening is it, it's it's like the right time, right place type of thing. And I think the economy and and where we're at right now, uh, that this was just a good timing. Uh, Mr. Liston, our administrator, took the, the took the initiative to go out and get this done, and I appreciate your hard work and everybody that was involved. Appreciate it a lot because this this means this is going to mean a lot to the town. Uh, we all love our old buildings and we all want them to stay uh, where they're at and how they are. Um, and this this isn't the last one. We are focusing on a lot of the older buildings downtown in, in Hamilton and then make planning to uh, make sure that they they get repurposed. So the first of many. And and Mr. Mayor, if I may add, mm -hmm. it's it is it's important to add we we've, we've taken considerable criticism um, on this piece of property. And I think it's important to note that um, just because you don't see things happening, it doesn't mean the committee's not working on those things. Bring them to our attention. But I, I think in some cases, the criticism that we just recently received on this was unwarranted. So I'm really happy to see this moving along. And uh, I'll move item 3A. Second. Thank you. I have a motion and a second. Are there any other questions? Hearing no questions. Do I? I need a roll call for this or no? No, Mayor. Okay, thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, e, resolution appointing the Township of Hamilton conditional, the redeveloper, and authorizing execution of memorandum understanding between Township and Richard C. Richard Tunney Incorporated. Arch a little background. Uh, yes, this is a project that involves the car wash on Route 50, uh, right at the 5040 intersection. Uh, it, it is a self car wash. The gentleman came in with a concept and idea um, to add some jobs to the community and refurbish the building as a uh, ice cream uh, location, ice cream stand, uh, with a drive through. And on top of that, where he'd have some space to uh, run birthday parties and so forth for the community, for kids in uh, the area, which I don't think we have. Uh, so it, it's just a nice little project, and this will give him the ability to exercise the tax abatements and, and with the improvements he would do to the property. Okay. Very good. So the car wash will be gone, just going to be ice cream. <laughs> yes. Makes me happy. <laughs> And is, are we going to do anything with that road that needs to be addressed on the back side? Are we able to do anything to get him to fix that? 
Um, I, I, I'm sure, uh, Mr. Patelli, that that'll be uh, discussed at the planning board level. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure that members of that board are going to have a lot of questions regarding that. Um, I, I believe at one point there was some confusion about ownership of that road. Um, so it may be a case where he cannot repair it. Right. Um, but um, I'm sure that'll all come out at the planning board level. With that, I'll move 3B. Second. Are we a motion is second. Are there any questions? Hearing no questions, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Move on to 3C. Resolution authorizing the Township of Hamilton Planning Board to conduct preliminary investigation to establish a non condemnation redevelopment area within ha Township of Hamilton referred to as Woods Edge Redevelopment Area. Mark? Yes, sir. This is a area that at Route 40 and uh, Cullen Avenue, which is kind of a uh, pie shaped uh, piece, large piece, uh, which would allow, uh, this is this actually what this does is sends it to the uh, planning board from the committee for investigation to make the determination that this piece of property and an adjoining action adjoining piece of property meets the criteria for redevelopment and um, they would do an investigation uh, and have pre presentation by the planner then it will, if they determine it they would send it back for determination to the committee good um uh, i'll move through see second uh you have a motion a second are there any questions Hearing no questions, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Oh. All those opposed, the ayes have it. Resolution authorizing the Township of Hamilton Planning Board to conduct preliminary investigation to establish non condensation redevelopment area within Ham Township of Hamilton, blocks 1323, lot two and three. Arch. This is a, a large piece where Zabers used to be, uh, right on the border of Egg Harbor Township on Route 40, 322. Um, this is an area we would uh, are looking for uh, some form of development plan for commercial and or uh, a mixed use. Uh, we, th this is just the resolution to send it to planning board for the investigative process. It's nice to see the interest in Hamilton Township once again. Um, it's, nice. it's nice to see that property being put to use. Yes, absolutely. A second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, I, I, I have a comment. This, this is, um, you know, we, we started this process a couple of years ago um, with the redevelopment, the rehabilitation, and this is a good day. I mean, there's there's four things on this agenda tonight that are a direct reflection of the steps that the Township Committee took to uh, to put this ordinance in place. It gives us um, a lot of flexibility to help developers, to entice developers, and after seeing what's happening here tonight, it's tr it's obvious that the word is out and Hamilton Township is open for business. So with that, uh, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. <clears throat> uh, four, public hearing, adoption of ordinances. We have an ordinance 1930-2020, an ordinance authorizing the sale of lots 1622 in block 317 as shown on the tax map of the Township of Hamilton <clears throat> and granting the owner or owners said real property contiguous to the same right to prior refusal to purchase such land in the Township of Hamilton. This is Mobile Avenue. Uh, this is a public hearing. Standing by the gravesite of Kelly's son. Anybody in the public like to speak? Okay. Close the public portion. We have a motion to close public Second. portion. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. So, Chair will entertain an adoption of ordinance. I'll make that motion. Second. 
It's motion and second to adopt ordinance 1930-2020. Are there any questions? Hearing no questions, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Can you get a roll call on this one? Sure. Um, Mr. Kane? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Mr. Gishard? Okay, we'll come back. Um, Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. Mr. Gishard, can you unmute yourself so you can vote on this, please? We don't have video. Okay. I don't know how to count that. <laughs> we got three yes. It passes. All right. Uh, we move on to 4B, Ordinance 1931-2020, an ordinance establishing regulations and fees for trash removal in conjunction with a shared service agreement with Atlanta County Utility Authorities. This is a public hearing. I'd like to open it up to the public. Anyone in the public would like to speak? Hearing none, Mr. Mayor, I move to close public portion. We have a motion and a second to close the public portion. Well, any... hold, Mr. Mayor, hold on. Did you have someone who wanted to speak at the public hearing? If, if they have any alter, alternative um, cell phones on or any other, it would cause the feedback, correct? All right. Whoever wishes to speak at the public hearing, we're going to need them to mute your phone or mute your um, any feet in the back. Or if you're listening to it in two different rooms, you may have to close the door. Um, but we have to attempt to get some public feedback. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Perth, can you hear me? He just muted. Um, what's the next meeting? The 21st? 21st. Well, we can get the applications out of the ordinance, correct? But if there's only... But the meeting's been advertised, and if there's only two callers on, I mean, wouldn't, that just, wouldn't we make the assumption that the, the no one wants to speak on it? Oh, do you? Okay. All right, let's, let's, yeah, we've got to make, yeah. can you hear us? Yes. Yes. We have a friend. 
heard right now. I make my motion to close the public on. Just leave it open. Leave it open. I'm going to have to re advertise, right? So, yes. It, it should be on the screen. Yes. Can you zoom in on that? Oh. He said he, if those two poles were disconnected, would then everybody else be able to speak? Can we do that? And just tell. Right. So could we? It, it's Rodney, the other one. Well, can can we call him? You have to unmute everybody. <laughs> I mean, we can put Rodney on speaker from right from there. Do you want to do that and we can just do the cleanup work and then come back to this? What about the public hearing we just did for the other ordinance? We should be open actually. I, okay. Do we need a motion to move this on the agenda or can we just come back to it? We can come back to it. Okay. All right. So since we're having technical difficulties, we're going to move beyond four, the public hearings and, and adoption of ordinances, and we'll come back to both ordinances. Uh, hopefully we get this straightened out. Uh, we have no introduction of ordinances. We are going to move to six awards of bids, contracts, and change orders. A, resolution authorizing purchase of Edema live scan fingerprint hardware software from Edema under state contract cost not to exceed $24,746. Mr. Mayor, this is a uh, fingerprint system, the AFID system for the police department. Uh, this is being purchased due to the fact that the other software program and the other system that they had uh, basically is outdated and not being supported anymore. Okay. So this is being forced across the state by all the agencies needing to replace their basis fingerprint systems. Okay. This one, yes. I'll, I'll make a motion to move 6A. We have a motion. We have a second. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, Rita, can we get a roll call vote, please? Mr. Kane? Yes. Mr. Gashard? <clears throat> Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Schenker? Yes. B. Yes. I'm sorry. Three yes. I'm carried. D. Resolution authorizing the purchase of patrol PC mobile data terminals from E. Elite Vehicle Solutions under state contract. Cost not to exceed $29,730.02. Mr. Mayor, this is the upfitting of uh, police, new police vehicles uh, with with computer systems. Very good. I'll move 6B. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? Hearing no questions, all those, excuse me, roll call vote, please. Mr. Kane? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mr. Patali? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. Four yes and carried. Thank you. Resolution C, resolution authorizing the purchase of five WatchGuard MVRs from WatchGuard under state contract, cost not to exceed $27,735.
So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Uh, Arch, you want to give us a little background on this? Obviously, this is more equipment. Is this recorders to vehicle recorders? Okay. Right. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. Are there any questions or comments? Rita, can we get a roll call vote, please? Mr. Kane? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. 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 Mayor Shanker? Yes. Yes and Terry. Thank you. Uh, D, resolution authorizing the purchase of equipment and labor for fit up of five police vehicles for major police supply through non-state and state contract, cost not to exceed $71,796.20. Mr. Mayor, this is the um, upfitting of the cages, uh, the, the equipment that holds the MDT, the equipment that holds the cameras, the whole upfitting of the lights of the, of, for the vehicles, okay. uh, the whole thing. And, and as you realize, the cost to upfit a car, a police car anymore, is substantial. It's because it's like a, an F-15 now. Mm -hmm. They have all that equipment, all those lights and everything, so they mm -hmm. you okay. can see the cost. Whatever happened to the one single light on the top? Can't we okay, just so do can't that? we do that? Not anymore. <laughs> I have one of them. <laughs> you can borrow it any time, Chief. <laughs> uh, committee? So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, Rita, can we get a roll call vote, please? Mr. Kane? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mr. Batali? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. Four yes and carried. Can we go back to 6A so I can just get Mr. Gishard's vote on that? Mr. Wanna... Mr. Gishard, can you hear me? Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can, sir. Um, on 6A, I wasn't able to get your vote for the fingerprint. Yeah, I voted yes. Okay, thank you. So that is four yes for that and carried. Okay. okay. Hey, you can hear me now? I can. Don't do anything. Right. Four. Stay right there. <laughs> um, yes. One of the seven dissent agenda. Mayor, can we move uh, A out for discussion, please? Yes. And with that, I will move B through G on the consent agenda. Okay. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry, I got lost there. For Can you a take G out? Uh, G. You want to take G out? Yeah, I just have a question. Okay. All right. All right. So then I'll amend my motion to B through F. Okay. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Are there any questions? Hearing no questions. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. Uh, we'll move on to 7A, business registrations. Um, Rare Paris, New Jersey, LLC, 4403 Black Horse Pike. And number two, Jack Lyon, transient vendor, Atlantic City Race Course, 926.20 to 10.920. I, I wanted to have discussion on um, Jack Lyons um, at the Atlantic City Race Track. Um, it, it appears there was a considerable discussion in front of the planning committee regarding this uh, transient vendor that has operated out there for many, many years. Um, and during that discussion, it was made perfectly clear that all the equipment, nothing should be visible at any time other than during auction time. Right. And I don't believe that's the case. And I don't know whether we're looking into it from a zoning aspect, um, enforcement aspect, but, um, I'm willing to grant them this license, uh, this this additional registration, but I think we should be looking into and enforcing the fact that that's everything is supposed to be moved out of sight when there's not an auction, and and that's not currently happening. Yeah, I mean, you go to move. Yeah, please. <laughs> um. I reviewed the planning board uh, approval for this, um, and I did see a couple stipulations. Um, one was that they, the equipment, this is, this is just the wording of the resolution, so this is a con condition of approval. 
um, that basically says that they were to put the equipment in an area that was not at all to recent uses of the surrounding areas. Um, so one thing to note though in the resolution, it does not stipulate in those conditions of approval that the everything had to be completely was the fact that you had to kind of set up for the auction two weeks ahead of time and two weeks after. So following, I guess, the receipt of the complaint or the concern about this, um, myself and the zoning officer did go to the site and it appeared that everything was sort of set up in a very orderly fashion. You could still see the equipment from where we were in the vantage point we had, which was right by the Planet Fitness um, area. So arguably you could see it if you were driving that way, but if you were driving past like on that Wrangleboro Road, you really, it wasn't visible. Um, but, you know, per the resolution, it doesn't appear, at least from my perspective in reading it, that it would stipulate in there that, you know, they had to have nothing visible at all. It would be an empty parking lot. Um, if that's the case, then I'm mistaken, but that's what I'm reading in the ordinance or in the resolution. So um, from that standpoint, I'm not sure about whether in the past, if, you know, following other uh, applications for their transient vendor, if they weren't in compliance, we hadn't received any complaints, um, but the whole purpose of them coming to the planning board for their, you know, vendor uh, approval for this was to legalize what had not been done for 30 some years. Um, so arguably they were in compliance with respect to obtaining the planning board approval for that operation, um, but this, the, the enforcement of the conditions, you know, that's up, that's for our zoning officer um, to be responsible for to make sure that they are putting these items, you know, in the proper place. Um, Again, that's what I'm reading from here. I could review the minutes to see if there was a discussion more, but not that I could recall, which I know I was there for that meeting, so um, I the extensive discussion about, you know, them having to, to come forward for this and everything. But from what I could tell in the resolution, again, it didn't, it, it seems like the, the equipment was to be in an area that was not detrimental. Um, now again, if there was if there was a situation where you observed them having things kind of thrown about or in uh, different areas all over the place, I'm not you know I didn't observe that when we went past. Um, it appears the way they are right now that it looks to be in compliance. I recall considerable uh, conversation about uh, the fact that sometimes a, a, a piece of equipment the sale will fall through or they can't move the equipment and we we understood that as a board that that would happen but with that being said i i remember the conversation as such that 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 equipment then would be moved to a location that could not be visible right. by the public and um i just well, want to make sure they're upholding that and i think if you like i said I, I if you're going through where i what where we were was right where the trash enclosure is by the planet fitness that whole shopping center behind it so, I mean, I'm not sure how much public traffic is going through there, um, but from our, my perspective, it looked to be in compliance. Um, but, you know, if there's other concerns, you can certainly address them. If there's something where you're going past there on any given day, maybe after this auction, and it's still, you know, a mess or something like that, we can take care of it. And okay, thank you. I, I have a question. I, I... Charlie probably knows much more about this. I've never been on the planning board or anything like that, but how does, uh, to me, a transient vendor is somewhat like the fireworks people that came in, did their thing by weekend, and then left. How does a transient vendor get a resolution through the planning board? Well, these folks have a, have a lease agreement with the, you know, the racetrack. Um, people, so they have this, this is their place where they do their business, um, but they do, but they're not operating as an auction all year, you know, every single day. It's only How many day. times a year do they have an auction? I believe it's four. 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 So, four. For, so four times out of the year, they are, have machinery on that property, if they're doing everything by the letter of the resolution, for six weeks. Right. And, it's but, 24 weeks. 
52 weeks in a year. So for six months, just about, they've got business going on out there. So I don't, I'm, I'm having a, my issue is, how are they still considered transient? I think, it, isn't it supposed to be 926 to 109 for this one? Mm -hmm. That's two weeks, right? Mm -hmm. Two weeks before, two weeks after. Right. And, oh, and they're allowed two weeks before that and two weeks what after. Hannah that. just okay, said. I got to set up and you. break down. But I think that the, the situation with this is that they're, the auction itself is what they're getting that license or, or you know, approval for. Um, and then otherwise, they're, you know, they obtained approval to store a limited amount of items on the property. Which is what I was saying to Mr. King is that they, the resolution stipulated that they were allowed to have a certain amount, but they weren't supposed to be, you know, just in an in a, in a area where it would be detrimental to their you know, neighboring um, properties. So I think they were considered similar to another um, Mercado market if you're familiar that I guess operated on a, on a different basis but it was a, you know temporary vendor type of thing mm -hmm. so that was my understanding of it um through the planning board so they did a resolution for the Mercado market too there was yeah okay yeah and, and the stipulation were, in that was they had to be completely invisible after the market happened completely invisible so once, once it was over they went away and then they could set up again the following, but it had to be returned to its natural state, and then they go back and do it again. Okay. And that, that's the only concern. I just want to make sure that the equipment, um, that it complies with all the conversation that the planning board had. The planning board members are volunteers. They sat through an hour or so testimony, made decisions, and I want to make sure that okay. we're upholding that for them. All right. Like I said, I'm not really up on all this kind of stuff, but it just seems a strange terminology to be a transient when as long as it's following all the rules that's a question if it's a permanent operation partial parts of the year i mean isn't that a, i mean that that's a, a permanent use then they're just moving stuff in and out it'd be like a car auction a car auction you know, they have cars in there sometimes, they don't have cars in there, other times they don't have cars in there, but they are not temporary, they're a permanent auction. This, at this point, and I think we've got to look at it and have it reviewed, this is not a temporary business if they're doing it year-round and have a, and they've got a planning board approval, so it's a long-term use. How long have they been doing this for? 30 years. How many? More than 30 years. Is there a but there now? But they're... I guess this is temporary. Yeah. But they're on another business's property so they For can't least, they can't be as a business correct they can. everybody in the malls on somebody else's property yeah but planning board approval through administrator review they're a transient vendor so what happened was they did do that and then Craig Hurlis um from Palestina said that he, they should come for a hearing so they did come for a hearing more more likely than not transient vendors don't appear for hearings for the plan board but these folks did i think it was because they were similar to that Mercado situation and then additionally given the history that's what his recommendation was that they appeared before the plan so initially they did just come in for administrative review um because per ordinance for transient vendors so, there are su a sub portion of the transient vendor is an auctioneer. It's an auctioneer license. That's what we're giving them for an auctioneer for a specific auction, like someone that you would hire for an estate sale or something like that. Mercado's was a um, flea market license. It was $1,000. It's, it's, this is a $25 license that is just for an auctioneer to come in and, and do that specific auction. That's what they're operating. Because what happened? is we're giving them a license for a transient vendor as as an auction as you said yeah. but if they're leaving the equipment on the property now we're we're granting them an out and that was not the intent of the conversation at the planning board and that's that's what i'm concerned of the conversation that occasionally a deal falls through or a piece of equipment sold in at a, a, a distance and that you know piece of equipment could be left behind but then that would ultimately be removed in the time that it was left behind, it would not be in public view. 
That's all. So if the equipment is staying there and now becomes storage, that's a whole nother issue. So it shouldn't be there except for the given periods of time. That's all. I'm not trying to hurt this. So business. there shouldn't be equipment there now. If they're if they're licensed, if the, what they're applying for is these, there there should not be equipment there now, correct? Because the last auction would have been. But what the clerk is saying, the only we're the auctioneer is separate from the business. The business, and we're not. The, the, Thirty years ago, I mean, the business isn't operating right now, but it it certainly was then. So. But that, the guy who owns the equipment. Yeah. He's hiring an auctioneer. He is the. He, he is. Well, he is the auctioneer. I don't know for how the, okay. he's doing it. That's who's Jack Lyons. Let's, let's approach this from a different way. Let me see how this is being taxed. That's what I'm curious about. If it's being taxed as vacant property, then we've got to look at the way we retax this as Race it's being used. Is being taxed that it's not improved, prop, uh, improved property. To do right. This but you have a business man running a business out of here or people running a business out of here. Then we have to see it's what their use is and, and how it's being taxed. I mean, there, listen, there's an inherent benefit to the community. I mean, it does give local contractors access to, um, you know, uh, uh, extra equipment in, in an auction setting. So there's an inherent benefit to it. But it's, again, it's not a storage lot. It's an auction. And once the auction's done, it, it, it needs to go away. If not, it should be looked at differently. And I, I agree with that. And it, it brings people to our town. Hopefully they... You, and you know my feeling on that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, um, but at the same time, they got to be following the rules that they set forth, which is two weeks before, two weeks after. That gives them six weeks. Listen, we 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 deal with towing and storage ordinances, and when that's coming up again, so the, I mean it's the same thing. I mean they they need to be in compliance, and that's that's the point I'm trying to. I just want to make sure that um, if you I, again, you were at the meeting, Mr. Philippone was at the meeting. The the conversation was. Um, again, once it's over, there could be a stray piece of equipment or something that would be moved into an area where it couldn't be seen, but nothing would be stored on the property, with the exception, I believe, of a single construction trailer um, in a specific location. Right. Okay. With with that, I, I will move 7A, but I think we should reach out to them with the discussion here this evening, and yeah. if they're not in compliance, they should receive a fine. Um, and let them know that we won't. This won't happen again if they don't remain in compliance. Okay. Anna, thank you. Appreciate it. You made the motion. Yes, yes. I did. Second. The motion is second. Are there any questions? Hearing no questions, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. Uh, we'll move to 7G resolution authorizing execution of an amended open space trust financial assistance agreement with the county of atlantic for the second street park property acquisition mark you want to give a background on this please yeah yes um actually Christy, you, you know more about it than i do sure um back in december 10th 2018 there was an agreement between hamilton Township, the county and um certain individuals which was and organizations, the Greater Egg Harbor Watershed Association and um, Fred Boren owned a piece of property. The agreement in essence said that this land was going to be used for an open space and Hamilton Township was going to be the purchaser. Mm -hmm. Hamilton Township, however, would not have to fund any of the money in order to purchase this property because we were going to be reimbursed by the county. So what happened is a multi-step process. What first happened was we entered into the agreement with the county, which was December 10th, 2018, and we were going to pay $25,000 for um, acquiring this land. And the county was going to reimburse us. There's two, the checks were being drafted in two separate um, sections. The first was for 19,000. That has been completed. The original agreement gave us an end date of two years which brought us to May of 2020. But since that date has such passed, we still have one piece of this project that's left over, which is um, to get the $6,000. The deeds have already been drafted. They've already been um, sent to the clerk for recording. We're waiting to get back the recorded copies. 
the only thing that's outstanding is the last six thousand dollars that's being transferred from the county to us so is it so the property has already been bought from mm -hmm. the original owner yes okay there's only just one piece left of the project that wasn't able to be completed prior to the May um, 2020 C. So the only thing left over is is the six thousand dollars, and the county required an additional agreement in order to extend the time. Um, the county has, on their end, the freeholders approved their resolution in order to extend it to um, December 31st of this year. So the only last step would be on our end to extend the agreement as well. Understood. I remember the original owner had to go, he went to the zoning board to get all kinds of variances to build a house there, which he had absolutely no intentions of doing, he turned around and sold it to us. So it just increased the value of the property. And at least we didn't have to pay for it, but mm -hmm. it came out of somebody's tax pocket. Yep. <clears throat> okay. Um, What's I'll your make that motion move in, where are we? 7G. 7 mm -hmm. Second. Your motion is second. Uh, to move 7G. Are there any questions or comments? Nine. Aye. Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have. <clears throat> uh, we go to personnel. A, resolutions. Resolution to change employment status of Rumid J. Perez from Class 1 Special Law Enforcement Officer to Class 2 Special Law Enforcement Officer for the Police Department at the rate of $19 an hour, effective 9-21-20. I'll make that motion. Second. We have a motion and second. Rita, can we get a roll call vote for this, please? Mr. Kane? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Callie, Mayor Shanker. Yes. All yes and carry. B, resolution to change the employment status of Christopher J. Carey from Class 1 Special Law Enforcement Officer to Class 2 Special Law Enforcement Officer for the Police Department at a rate of $19 an hour to be effective 92120. I'll make that motion. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those, uh, give me a roll call vote, please. I'm sorry. Mr. Kane? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Callie? Yes. And Mayor Shanker? Yes. Oh, yes, and carry. Thank you. Nine approvals. A, minutes, August 17th, 2020, regular meeting. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Are there questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed? Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. <clears throat> B, minutes of the August 17th, 2020 executive session. So moved. Second. A motion, we have a second. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, Rita, can we get a roll call vote, please? Mr. Kane? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Vitaly? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. All yes and carried. Thank you. C, bills. Bill list total of $1,473,676.41. I have to abstain from this. I'll make that motion. Second it. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions or comments? Rita, can we get a roll call vote, please? Mr. Kane? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mr. Vitale? I abstain. Mayor Shanker? Yes. Three yes, one abstention. Motion carries. Thank you. We move to 10 reports. A, Mr. Administrator. Uh, just a, a couple things real quick. Um, first, I want to thank for, for the redevelopment process we're going through. I, I really want to thank Hannah for her, her diligence and, and helping you through and, and learning the process uh, and, and working through. For, and she's done an excellent job with that, especially with the American Legion. Uh, she really shepherded that through, and, and I know it was a project that was outstanding for a long time. The second thing I want to discuss is the uh, opening of the meetings and and how the committee wants to handle the uh, open of the meetings to the public. Uh, what we've done, just and I might have to yell a little bit about this, but we have put in spaces for the public to come and talk to each other. 
11 people on this side and 11 people on that side. I can't hear you. Shrug your short. All right, Mr. Sard, I'm, I'm just showing the committee the uh, spacing that we do have in the uh, the audience here, where we have taken and marked off uh, social distancing areas. So, if the committee wishes, you can reopen the meeting to the public, uh, limiting 11 to each side, uh, and also keep the social distancing up there. But we would also keep the video system going for people who did not wish to come out to the public meeting because they still don't feel secure about the, the COVID situation. So I just wanted to let everyone know if you get a chance to look that we have spaced it out. And just back here, like here, last row, special space here and all the way through and there'd be two rows between each. So there's no one be sitting here and there'd be no one sitting in the first row where uh, the engineer is right now, uh, we would eliminate this row and have the first seat would be back here. And then again, there and on the end of it. So we the courts have worked through this. And I think that if the committee wishes, they can reopen the meeting for limited, obviously limited size. Uh, that's what they want to do. So I guess the first question and probably the obvious question is we get we're allowed to bring in 22 members of the public. After that, were we turning people away? No, we would. We well, that's why we would keep it up on the video system, so people who could not come because of they could then listen to it or they could watch it on video. Well, okay, but when you know nobody loves a good mob like I do. So what if there's a whole bunch of people that want to come in here and tell us how great we are? Um, at 22 people, we just say that's it. That's it. You would have to use the uh, the audio. We'd have to advertise to make sure that both both is available. Okay. I mean, listen, I'm I'm all for. <laughs> this is this is a struggle, as you can see, and it's been a struggle that we've we've had to deal with. But I certainly don't want to turn anybody away. That's my only reservation. Look at it. We'd have to put someone at the door. We'd put a police officer at the door who would do temperature checks for people coming in, make sure masks were worn, social distance maintained. But even with 22, if you take away the 22 in our people, then you down to you know about 14 or 15, right? Because we have to let our some of our people in, or if we rotated them in or out between here and A, uh, it just gives you different options of of what you, what you want to do. Uh, I will tell you, in looking at the charts today, our transmission ratio is up to 1.10. Three weeks, two couple of weeks ago, it was at 0.81. So you are seeing a ray rise in the, the, the COVID exposures in our transmission rate again. So just for information. Ready? Well, I thought that the governor said 25% or 150 people. And how many people can we fit in here? So what, so it's more so, it's social distancing, and not the size of the room. You can have that if you have the size of the room, but you still have to maintain social distancing. That's the that's the way the order reads: is you've got to maintain the distance. So even though it says you can do 25%, yes, you can do 25% if you have the size to maintain social distancing. I think we have to open it up to as many as we can. I, I agree with that. I mean, I, I believe that it's we, we we have to start returning to some sense of normalcy, and I think having access is is important to the residents. And and how about the? Um, I guess it would be the same as watching it at home. I remember when we had unfortunately some very large meetings, we had to put um, monitors out in the vestibule for for overflow. But um, I guess that would be the same as watching it at home. So. Would we have the option to rotate people out if there was a um, an issue that 
fall into a I, larger I crowd. Fairly, but you can't, you can't. You wouldn't be able to, people. right. I, I would, you know, I would hate to have somebody who couldn't get in the room who came here and wants to speak. It's, you know. Listen, I'm, I'm not against it because I agree with both Charlie and Carl. We got to get back to some sense of normalcy, and this, this is a little bit on the annoying side, but we're doing the best we can. Of course. Um, I, I think we should do it, and let's just take it meeting by meeting. You know, if there's an issue comes up, we'll we'll deal with it at the best we can. I mean, I just don't want to offend anybody. It's not our intention to keep anybody from coming into this meeting. We just have to go by the guidelines, and that's that's really right. as much as we want to go back to the way it is all the time. Um, can I ask a question with Tally's point? Um, and I understood how you said social distancing, but if we put a sign up board, since we're going to have a police officer out there anyway, could we put a sign up board outside if the room does come to capacity for those that want to talk on a certain issue and maybe allow them to come through just to speak and then usher them back out or no? The the problem being is with the foyer, you're still going to have to have social distancing in the yeah. foyer. Yes. So it's one of those where once we get, out, you know, we could we could attempt to put it on the meeting on the screen outside, all right, which we probably could accomplish. But then if once we overload that area, if it gets more, people would have to be go outside and they wouldn't be allowed in. But again, they could call in on their phones and they could monitor it by the phones and participate by phone. Uh, or by video as we're doing now, or attempting to do now. Well, well, as everybody knows, the, the rules are continuously evolving and, and changing, and we, our job and Mr. Sandman's job is to confirm the fact that all the guidelines are being met um, and being followed. So one of the things that I will do when I go back to the office is I'll discuss this with Mr. Sandman and figure out if there's um, either guidelines to improve to implement in opening it back up or if there's a way um, in order to make sure that um, anybody who wants to come in person has the ability to do so while still following all of the CDC guidelines. Okay. Well, I mean, we need input from the committee if they want to open the meetings up. I guess you, they could do a motion to open, reopen meetings to the limited capacity under the guidelines. I just do it by. I would not advise of, of, by, uh, doing a motion on that today until I have the opportunity to review um, with Mr. Sandman. Can, can we just? I mean, we never took a motion to. Yeah, so we can close it. No, we can administratively. I mean, we can administratively right, take the action. That's, that. not, that's not that's not a problem. I, I think uh, that we need to. You know, I guess Arch is looking for your opinion. I, my my opinion is um, yes, if it's doable, and is give him the administrative. Ability to do it pending the outcome of the discussion. Okay. Ryan, you have anything to say? I haven't said anything. Ronnie, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Can you hear me? Yes. Did you hear? Did you hear the discussion about reopening the meetings to the public under the COVID rules? Yes. Are you okay with that? Yeah, I'm okay with it if, if that's what the committee would like to do. I think we all want to try it, and let's let's see what happens, and hopefully it'll be, um, you know, Jessica said these rules are are changing. You know, some of the rules are re relieving us, uh, you know, from some of the burden. Uh, every day. So I. Um, I think we uh, we want our administrator to do what he needs to do to, to get some people back in here, and and we'll we'll deal with the problems as they come. Right? Anything else? I do have a question for the administrator or for anybody. It was mentioned that the transmission rate is going from 0.8 something to one. Is that right? Up to one. It was at 1.1 today. So 1.1. What was the cause of, for the increase? Any idea? 
not just exposures in, in the state. I, I mean, it's specifically, I'd have to get down to the contact tracing issues. Uh, but it, uh, they, they are projecting everything I'm looking at because uh, they added Delaware again to, say, to the quarantine issue. Um, I mean, they are expecting increases in, in the exposure uh, transmission rate again uh, because of the summer. Uh, kids going back to school, colleges going back to college, which obviously they've had. So, I mean, it's a statewide number. Uh, and, and we're still fortunate here that we're re relatively low. Uh, but we don't know. And I guess this is, again, where we play it by ear. I mean, honestly, if we get a, a jack in numbers um, in two weeks, I mean, we've got, I think we've got to reconsider and maybe not do it. You know, and so it's, it's one of those things that we, we, we have to look at both sides of the, that equation. Yeah. How about how about how about this guideline? If, if the governor closes, the governor's twenty five percent on restaurants right now. Uh huh. If he if he closes down restaurants again, then we use that as a guideline. Okay. Anybody in the public can be no. right. ourselves or anybody in this room. So it's, you know, it's, we're all walking in an uncharted territory right now. Much as we all want to get back to normal. Okay. Well, Arch. That's all I have. Thank you. The solicitor. I have nothing to report. Thank you. Mr. Engineer. The microphone, we had some issues last minute. Yeah. Mayor and committee, I'll, I'll keep it very brief. Uh, my first uh, item on, on my list is Lake Lenape Dam. We had a meeting three weeks ago. We, we have a follow-up to our next meeting is September 14th. That's Monday at 2, two o'clock. Um, we mentioned at the meeting three weeks ago from WSP that they completed their biannual biannual report every two years they do an inspe it's an inspection on the dam they had some minor and i understand in, in speaking with brett brett has been taking care of the, the minor items that are our responsibility the county has a few minor items that they're taking care of so it, it generally the, the it was a very favorable by the engineer that's been hired by the county and uh they're being made um what we're waiting for next with the dam is wsp owes the county and us a conceptual design, and I suspect we're going to see this conceptual design on Monday at, at the dam committee meeting. So that that's sort of the next uh, point that we're looking for in the dam committee. But things are moving ahead, and I think it's because of these monthly meetings that, especially Carl had pushed for six six months ago. So I think we're making some progress. Before you move on, um, I know one of the things that was we had to remove all the vegetation. Did we figure out whose responsibility that is? That's Brett's responsibility, and he's already, I think he started on it already. Boy, I wish. Oh, on the, on the bigger side. Okay. The, the next item on my list is Cotton Mill Bridge. It's, um, I was out there Friday morning and speaking with the county. Things are moving along very routinely. They're on schedule. Um, they're working on the south abutment right now. and. Um, Nothing new to report. Very, very um, systematically, they're working through this uh, construction project. I, I have two projects I completed this this summer. One was the the road program, and the other was New York Avenue. I I have some minor punch list items. I have both contractors working on cleaning those minor items up. Um, Avenue. I I've been patiently waiting for NJDOT to give me the okay to put that project out to bid. I'm, I'm hoping to have that any day, and I need to get that project out to bid so we can, we can reconstruct New York Avenue. And that's from the jail to the post office. That's the limits of the project. Atlantic Avenue. Atlantic Avenue. Um, the only other thing I have is, it's not on my list, but Alfred Lundy, I'm trying to get um, a, a, an approval letter. I'm, I was told verbally Alfred Lundy is, is approved by the Community Block Grant Office. Once they give me an approval letter, they're going to they're ask they're going to ask in that letter for certification funds. That's thirty nine thousand dollars that we can get back in, in, in into the township. Um, so I'm pushing pretty hard to get out uh, an approval letter from out from uh, community block grant office. 
And um, I'm expecting that any day. Um, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thanks. Anybody have any questions for the engineer? Thank you, Steve. We'll move on to township committee members. Carl? Uh, this weekend, night of this Saturday. Uh, boats line up at South River at 6.45 p.m. Parade begins approximately 7.15, so that should put them at the bulkhead. They say 8 o'clock. I say probably 8.30, but 8 o'clock at the bulkhead. Um, every year it seems to get a little bit bigger this year with what's going on. I, I um, think they're three boats behind where they were last year, so hopefully maybe they get a few there. Good. Well, I'll be a judge. We'll be judging from the bulkhead. So come on down. Hopefully, if we have some good weather. Um, and that's that's all I have. Um, just say hi to Reagan and Maddie. Love you, miss you. All right, Charlie. That is a great addition that they brought back. I mean, that that was so popular for so many years, and it's nice to see the initiative taken to bring that back to the town. Um, I'd like to. The, I like to thank Brett and his staff as we see the cove come to another successful closure. There was a tremendous amount of obstacles to overcome this year. We all know that it is an asset to our community and it brings people to our community. Um, and I'd like to thank everyone involved, uh, the chief, uh, his officers, and again, Brett, his staff, uh, and, and, and Lisa for, for making it happen, getting it to happen, and having it be successful. Um, it was nice to see that some days, unfortunately, we had to turn some people away, and um, but uh, it's, it, it's part of what makes Hamilton Township different from surrounding communities. So uh, I appreciate the effort for uh, getting it done and having a successful season. And a nice um, new sign down there, by the way. I don't know I, if you saw it or not. But. I did not see it yet. I saw it in a report, but I did not see it. Yeah, it was great. Um, one of the things we talked about it earlier, and I, I won't belabor the point, but um, first of all, I'm very excited to see uh, the movement on the American Legion building. Um, again, great historic piece of property. Uh, and, and again, I want to thank the planning board and uh, the previous township committee as well as this township committee for moving forward on um, redevelopment in this township. Because as you said, Mr. Mayor, uh, we had four items this evening um, during a crisis. Um, that people want to come into Hamilton Township, invest money, uh, and develop here, that's saying something. And, and saying we, we, we made the right decision and moved in the right direction. And I expect as, as we move forward, we're going to see a lot more of this. And, and, and that's what we're looking for here in Hamilton Township, especially some of the commercial rateables that may come along with this to help offset the tax base. So um, that's, that's a great thing. Brad, I want to thank you for the clean communities, getting that back on track. Um, you know, that, that's a really great program, and, and I hope we have information up on the website uh, to, to uh, promote that. Um, getting these groups, uh, getting them paid, some of them it's their only for, source of income for the entire year. Uh, and two new groups coming along, plus it beautifies our roadways. So um, I appreciate you getting that up and running and, and, and back on track again. Um, our restaurants, uh, if you can, if you can afford it, please uh, get out and support them. They're open to 25%. Uh, I hope it's enough for some of the staples that have been in this community for decades. Um, you know, they've been hurt uh, more than uh, most other businesses. Uh, I hope they stay open at 25% um, and the governor starts allowing them to increase because as we all know, if anybody's ever done a business plan, 25% isn't gonna get it done but it'll at least be a start to get them and move in the right direction. And um, I'm, I'm really happy to see that. Uh, lastly, um, I wanna thank the 9-11 committee that uh, uh, once again, even under these very difficult circumstances, we'll be having the 9-11 ceremony uh, in, the, in the park uh, on obviously September 11th at 7 p.m. I believe it's gonna be broadcast um, also, correct? Uh, so you can be there in person practicing social distancing um, and and or view it on uh, uh, the, the uh, video, I guess the same type of streaming we're doing here. Um, and uh, I mean, I, th I just think it's so important that, uh, first of all, we never forget uh, 
lot of innocent individuals lost their lives that day, and, and it's equally important to uh, honor the respect of all the first responders that did their job and uh, sacrificed uh, in, in, in that process. So that's all I have. Very good. Rodney. Rodney. Uh, I'll pass. Okay. Thank you. Um, Can you hear me? Yes. Thanks, Rod. Um, I don't want to go over all the things that uh, Charlie just went over, but it's all important. Um, I just like to touch on one thing, and I want everybody to be aware that um, there there are other projects on the books that are coming to us. Um, so what we saw here tonight is truly just the beginning. But I want everyone to know that one of the things that we are focused on uh, is, is especially in the Main Street area that have fallen to disrepair. Uh, it's, it's become our, our focus to do what needs to be done. Um, the American Legion building is just the start. Things working on some of the other places, and we feel as though the better, the, the faster we can uh, get building some of these homes uh, straightened out, the sooner we can get Main Street back to its former glory. Um, so there's a lot of work and a lot of effort, and unfortunately, sometimes it doesn't seem like that, uh, but there is, and these things take time. Um, and maybe this is the time. Maybe it's the right time. I don't know. I hope so. So this is a very, very good time for us to uh, to move forward with some of these projects. <clears throat> so with that, I want to open it up to the so public. Go back to four, Mr. Mayor. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, we got that. We need to return to the public hearing section of the meeting. Uh, is... All right. just, just information we have. Um, Lieutenant Alcott was able to speak with Mr. Percy on the phone. Okay. And basically, what did he say, uh, Lieutenant? Yes, sir. Uh, the feedback we were able to resolve the issue with the feedback, and as a result, I was able to speak with Mr. Percy. He advised he had nothing. No okay. So we don't have anybody that wanted any comments. No. So we still need to yeah. vote on 4B. Or do we need to reopen the public hearing? I would feel better if you ask again. On both? Yeah, because somebody might have joined in okay. and wants to All say right, something. that's not a problem. So let's go to 4A. This is public hearing. Ordinance 1930-2020, an ordinance authorizing the sale of lots 16-22 in Block 317, as shown on a tax map of the Township of Hamilton and granting the owner or owners of said real property contiguous to the same right to prior refusal to purchase such land in the Township of Hamilton. This property is located on Mobile Avenue. Let's look back on the no matter how small, it's a good thing. Yep. And I'll move for a This is a public hearing. Anybody in the public like to speak? So any of you online that would like to speak, it looks to us like you're all muted. If you'd like to speak, you have to unmute yourself so we can hear you. <clears throat> Second. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Are there any questions? Hearing no questions, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion. Adopt the ordinance. I did. Thank you. Motion second. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, Rita, if we get a roll call vote, please. Mr. Kane? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Allie? Mayor Shanker? Yes. Four yes and one absent. Motion carries. Okay. 4B. Ordinance 1931-2020, an ordinance establishing regulations and fees for trash removal in conjunction with the shared ser services agreement with Atlantic County Utility Authority. 
public hearing. Anybody in the public like to speak? Anybody from the public like to speak? Yeah, the public? Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. Uh, the chair will entertain adoption of ordinance 1931-2020. We have a motion. Second. Are there any questions or comments? Rita, can we get a roll call vote, please? Mr. Kane? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Callie? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. Four yes, one absent. Ordinance is adopted. Did we open to public comment overall? Not yet. I didn't get we to that. We took care of this, right? so that's the next okay, thing. Thank you. Thank you. So I want to open the meeting to public comment. Anybody in the public would like to speak? Okay. Move to close the public portion. Second. A motion a second to close the public portion or any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Motion for adjournment is in order. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Are there any questions? No questions. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The aye. aye.